The most enduring buildings built by humankind have usually been dedicated to a higher power, and those kinds of buildings go back to the earliest days of civilization. In previous videos, we discussed how such buildings were built, manipulating light, loft, and craft to create transcendent space, that space in which we encounter God. But we never discussed where we put those kinds of buildings. What makes a site sacred? Mont Saint-Michel, on an island just off the coast of Normandy, has been a sacred place where people have gone to experience God for thousands of years before there was even ever a Christian church. Today it remains a place that still impresses. What is it about the history of the rocky island, the monastery and church, the town and the fortress, that still captures the imagination of people today? Is it merely our romantic yearning for the past, or is it truly a place? to encounter God. The island sits about a half a mile offshore from the Norman coast, in what England calls the English Channel, but France simply calls the Channel. It is about 17 acres in area, and had a rocky peak about 300 feet above the average sea level. Nature, or God, depending on your view, placed the island such that during human history, when the tide came in, the island would be cut off from the mainland by choppy, unswimmable waters. Even when the tide was out, there was only one pebbly sandbar that provided safe access to the island. Otherwise, the walker would face muds and quicksands that could swallow them as quickly as the water. The tides here vary dramatically, with the highest high tide being about 46 feet above low tide. Victor Hugo said the dangerous tides would gallop in with the speed of a horse. So perhaps there's a combination of danger and sanctuary that makes the island so intriguing. Druids found it sacred and worshipped there. Rome set up a stronghold there. But in 708 AD, Bishop Albert of Avranche had a series of visions in which he was instructed to sanctify the island for Christianity under the guidance of Saint Michael, the archangel who threw Satan out of heaven. The church and the monastery grew over the years, with many building projects built on top of the previous construction. There was also a town that grew at the base of the rock below the monastery. The Abbey Church, hosted by the Benedictine Order, became one of the primary destinations for Christian pilgrims in the Middle Ages. During the Hundred Years' War, the island was fortified and remained the one place in northern France that never surrendered to the invading English forces. Inspired by Mont Saint-Michel and her own visions of St. Michael, Joan of Arc was to lead the French to victory in battle. During the French Revolution, like many sacred places in France, the monastery was defaced, the monks thrown out, and the abbey itself was turned into a prison. But once France softened its views on religion, and with the inspiration from Victor Hugo, who also saved Notre Dame de Paris, the island was restored. In 1966, monks returned to Mont Saint-Michel, restoring the island as a sacred site. Many times a site is sacred because something miraculous happened there. For example, the Jewish temple in Jerusalem was built where ancient Hebrews believed that Abraham took Isaac and was willing to sacrifice him for God until an angel intervened. For Christians, Jesus taught in the temple and was tried and crucified not too far away. They built many churches at his sites in Jerusalem. For Muslims, Muhammad ascended into heaven from this spot, and so they built the Dome of the Rock Mosque on top of the Jewish temple foundations. The only way this place could have been more controversial would be if Buddha had summer there working as a lifeguard at the Pool of Siloam. In the United States, we have some sacred spaces based on historic events that happened there. The 9-11 Memorial is one example. But for the most part, we are not patient enough to wait for miracles. So we tend to make a site sacred by building a house of worship there. Yet the third and oldest way a site is deemed sacred is based on some natural form or anomaly, which intrigues us. The place just seems different, put there by our deity as a sign to us. The Puritana Lot Temple in Bali is also on an island surrounded by tidal waves. The Chapel of the Holy Spirit in Sedona was built there because the beauty of the rocky cliffs called people to pause and pray in thanksgiving 
to God. Mankind added to God's beauty at Mont Saint-Michel by building. This has long been the human response to God, to try to rival creation by erecting something that will also endure for eternity, or so we hope. Over the centuries, construction techniques and styles changed, and Mont Saint-Michel reflects this. This cacophony of different buildings gives the place a frenetic randomness that makes it full of surprises. The Romanesque nave at the top is built on an earlier church. Below is the 10th century Promenoir, believed to have been the chapter meeting room for the monks, at least for a time. It has some very imperfect 12th century Gothic vaults, showing that the builders were learning how to build that way. By the 13th century, they had learned enough to build Le Moville, the marvel, which is a Gothic addition on the north of the abbey that reaches up over 150 feet from the rock cliff below. During the siege of Mont Saint-Michel in the Hundred Years' War, during the 15th century, the Romanesque choir of the abbey church burned and collapsed. They started rebuilding it right away, but this time in high Gothic style. Also during the war, the island was fortified, building walls, barricades, and towers to defend against the military innovation of the cannon. And there are a lot of other interesting construction projects on the island. All these desperate and chaotic efforts have added to the intrinsic appeal of the island. It is as if every human endeavor, war, prayer, deprivation, celebration, has been frozen in stone in every room, every hidden chamber, every tower, every wall, every barricade, every portal of Mont Saint-Michel. The place is so intriguing that on our honeymoon visit to Mont Saint-Michel, my wife, Gina, asked, what if there was a Gothic novel that took place in a truly Gothic location like Mont Saint-Michel? There was no such book, so we wrote one. We began immediately to do research on the history and architecture of the island. Gina even translated a French chronicle written by the monks. And we went back to Mont Saint-Michel to walk the steps our characters take in the book. While we added characters to the story, history provided us with plenty of events, plot twists, and historic persons, but the story became intriguing on its own. In fact, the hardest part of the effort was just me trying to learn how to pronounce French words. We had a really good draft within three years. Then we started to have kids. And with other obligations and procrastinations, we put off the rewrites we knew it needed. 25 years later, with a couple of major edits and revisions, it is ready. We wanted it to be perfect, but we knew the story could not wait forever. Mont Saint-Michel Montjoie is available either as an ebook or paperback through Amazon Kindle. Montjoie literally means Mont Joy. It is the battle cry of France since the days of Charlemagne. The novel takes place during the Hundred Years' War when the besieged Mont Saint-Michel was the only hope to save France. In the book, we recreate medieval monastic life and glimpse into the lives of the aristocracy that would make pilgrimages there. We say the novel is Jane Eyre meets Braveheart meets The Name of the Rose in a really cool castle. Back to the island. UNESCO declared it and the bay as a World Heritage Site in 1979. The permanent sandbar constructed in the 19th century was having a negative effect on the shoreline, which has always been changing. So in 2014, a bridge was built that will allow the tidal waters to once again embrace the island entirely. Humankind aspires to the eternal and the divine. And we interpret those anomalies on the face of the earth as doorways to encounter our God. And we commemorate these sacred places by building on them. So even if most of the three million people who visit Mont Saint-Michel on an average year are not going there on religious pilgrimage, they are still being called to the place, called to a place created by the hand of God and the hand of man working together. In this regard, the universal appeal a sacred place is undeniable. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex. Mm -hmm.